Hello everybody and welcome to another episode with HDD Recovery Services. Sorry, I haven't been uh, uploading any of the content recently. It's just got really hectic up here in the lab, but I got I filmed tons of content that I have to just edit now. So the videos are going to be coming back uh, up consistently now. Uh, in front of you, I have a case that I have to finish that I wanted to share with you guys because I find that it's going to be most likely um, somewhat um, unpredictable outcome on this unit because uh, how rare this unit is. This is a, a tornado uh, parallel ATA family of Western Digital Drive. Uh, throughout my entire inventory, I was only able to find one donor drive. Now, the reason why this drive came in is uh, because uh, it was not spinning up when it's turned on. Now, what that usually tells us that uh, usually it would mean that the drive had uh, some sort of power surge that could have harmed the external board or possibly the internal uh, preamplifier as well if the power surge was severe. Now, by plugging in the original board, the drive is not making any types of sounds whatsoever. Not even a slight tick if I put my ear next to it when power goes to it. So something is going on with the original board. So I had it swapped out with the donor that I had for it. Now the problem with this specific device is that the printed circuit board has embedded firmware. What that means is that on the inside of the PCB, on the U12 position, we don't have any external memory um, to remove. We don't have a flash chip here. So that EP-ROM chip that is missing is actually inside of this bigger component right there. So what that makes um, for this recovery? Well, it adds a little extra step where uh, the firmware that is embedded into the printed circuit board of uh, the hard drive would have to be somehow uh, rebuilt to the condition of the original failed drive. I hope it makes sense and doesn't overwhelm you guys. This video is strictly going to be going over uh, basic repair features of uh, this type of hard drive. So if you experienced a problem with your unit and you need assistance on recovery, I highly suggest to seek some professional help, whether it's us or somebody else that you may find in your own city. Now, this unit here uh, was not spinning. So what I've done is I bolted on uh, a donor PCB. That donor PCB is from a different drive. Obviously the adaptives are not gonna match. So turning this drive on results in clicking sounds, okay? So uh, just to eliminate the possibility of having failed heads, um, I wanted to test these heads inside of the donor that is the same family donor. It's a completely different part number, but the family is the same. The set of barcodes right here will indicate which family the drive belongs to. In our case, it's APW which is a tornado family. And I'm pretty sure that parts inside of these drives, despite the fact that they're different part numbers, should be identical because uh, most of the time when the drives are close enough in manufacturing date and they're from the same family, that is good enough indicator that the parts will be compatible as long as they got identical physical head map, uh, meaning that they have same amount of heads on the same density. All right, so let's get to it. I want to swap parts from our patient drive and put them in the donor drive and test the donor if it works or not. If the donor doesn't work, then most, most likely uh, the parts inside of this unit here are also uh, no good and heads would need to be replaced. And that's when we're gonna use the donor head assembly from our donor and put them in the patient's hard drive. I hope it makes sense, but let's jump to the procedure, swap them over and see what we end up with. <laughs>
I've confirmed that the uh, uh, original heads in the patient's drive were uh, damaged because um, the donor that we did the swap on uh, did not work and it resulted in clicking sounds. So right now I have the working, confirmed working set of heads inside of our patient and um, um, I also tried the original board from this unit on the uh, donor and the donor was rotating so uh, that makes me believe that uh, there's a possible uh, case of burnt out preamp on the original drive and that's what was causing the whole issue in the first place but uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to power on this unit and this 750 gigabyte drive is going to be our target for uh, disk imaging process. I'm going to attach this and just uh, keep it off power for now. I'm going to run my PC3000 utility and power on the uh, parallel ATA0 channel. After about three tries, uh, this drive spins down, but that's, uh, but that's not a bad news yet. Um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to enter uh, the vendor-specific utility for it in a kernel mode. It doesn't give us a proper ID or anything, but at least it lets us in. And as the drive is turned down, this is an older unit, and an older unit, uh, there was an option to uh, um, edit uh, the head map inside of the RAM. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to switch all of the heads to uh, head number two. Software reset. That spins the drive up again. But this time it calibrates. And right now we're going to get uh, proper ready signals. If I hit Alt P, I should be getting a passport information, which I just did. Uh, so now I have to exit the kernel mode and enter the normal mode for this unit because it initialized properly and uh, switch the head map back to original configuration, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So we go back into work with RAM, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Head map had been changed. And now, just to confirm that the unit can read, I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, select uh, sector edit. This is the sector zero, and so on and so forth. And now we can go into data extractor and uh, create an imaging task for this case. This procedure most likely will be successful because uh, right now, at least, we were we were able to get the drive to a point where it's capable of reading information all on its own. And that's a really great news because uh, this is a rare unit and uh, the rarest piece about it is the PCB. And these PCBs are very easy to destroy uh, by uh, trying to record ROM into the PCB that is not compatible. And um, uh, I'm just glad that I don't have to go through the extent of finding an, uh, a better donor for it and that uh, the family uh, for this drive was good enough uh, to match to get access to it. So if you guys like this video, please do hit like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. This channel is strictly about data recovery subjects only. So if anything that uh, you guys want me to uh, explain or shoot a video about, uh, feel free to put your suggestions in the comments. I review them constantly and if there is something that I can uh, help to explain or if there's something that I can help to display, I would gladly do so. So thank you very much again for taking your time and watching this episode and I will see you guys in the next video.